All right, this is uh, prompted by my friend Yosef. Um, I've been talking to a little bit about, he's been working through my friend Sam and I's discussion on confessionalism and trying to relate it to a lot of Jewish thought and, um, and how the categories overlap and basically his big problems with orthodoxy or Christianity and the, the schisming and the killing and <laughs> all that stuff, which I think most Christians have a problem with too. And I see it broadly as, um, I see Christianity as the origin of uh, basically identitarianism and the culture war and um, what I call divided man consciousness. And um, and I think a lot of this is very tied to confessionalism. Sorry, I'm not even looking at the camera. I do that, I think. Uh, and, and the loss of confessionalism as a symbol, which is what the creeds were traditionally. Uh, they were both the emanating and the emergent reality, which allows for it to be personal. Um, it allows for it to not be the merely emanating reality, which is like the colonizing subtle bodies, principality group think, I think, where, where you're ideologically possessed. And it's not so much that you have ideas, but the ideas have you. They have colonized your consciousness and you are you're part of the Borg. You are the identical replicant that just repeats the same. That's confessionalism and it's worse because it's lost the creedal emergent thing, which is that that reality manifesting in you where you can use your own words, which is harmonious with that thing. It's not a historic. It's not... Me so so this, is where, this is where I'm going. It's not merely objective. It's not merely subjective. It's personal. So it's both those things. You can't put those two things in conflict with each other, which I think the modern consciousness has done. And I see this as just the evolution of consciousness and what it means uh, for to become a true human being. Um, this is related to what I was talking about in my last uh, post spurred spurred on by my friend Julian and his his takeaway from Sam and I's conversation that I want to f have a place a, f a place a feminine space all spaces are feminine where. Um, where I can share my essence and be held in as much as it's possible to share one's essence, who they truly, <clears throat> who they truly are, their divine spark, their, uh, their white stone name, whatever the, the core reality of who they are that's manifesting over time. Cause again, we're not, that thing is constant. That's the you, that's your soul, you know, whatever you want to call it, the, the true you, the true self, not the false self. Um, the thing that is constant, within you throughout your whole life. Because like even your body's not, right? From a materialism perspective, the atoms change. There's something about you, your core being, that is always being expressed. This is why I use the energy essence distinction. And again, energies and essences should never be put in conflict either. Conflict either. So I guess I wanted all this to be a preface to a question is like, I see this as an evolu evolving consciousness thing. It's an evolution of the true person, both which obviously has to be, I don't like the term individual, but like me, or I don't like the term, yeah, like just the isolated individualism, because the individual and collective is the same reality, I think. It's just identical replicants. Like that's part of the divided man self, I would say, and the group think, because that's what the collective is, the Borg. Um, it can't be that. So like how do we figure out who we really are, but that isn't in conflict with everyone else because that's part of our person you know those morphic fields that we participate in both our families our nations our cultures our cities our embodied reality that needs to be part of who we are as persons um you know without colonizing us that allows us to be free what's the balance of freedom and constraint and how do all these things relate um, how does that relate to identity? You know, I, I thought about all this because, like, the culture war, the woke stuff, the not woke stuff, the blue state, red state, the right and the left, all, the, like, those, these are false dichotomies because there's some, they're, they're not doing the Coleridge to distinguish without division. Like, what, we're dividing over these things. Why is, why are we schisming? Why do we schism within ourselves? A lot of it is judgment. It, it's, it's a condemning judgment that isn't a discernment. So how do, how do all these things relate? 
How do we move forward? What do we do? How do you, how do you work with someone in some higher uniting factor? I think Yosef was saying, what were the terms you were using, Yosef, the other day when you were trying to relate this stuff? Um, you're trying to map it onto Jewish ideas without dividing these two goods, right? The good, which is just like post-Lockean world where it's just like, the good is just what I take pleasure in, what I like, and the bad is what I don't like, which brings me pain. Whereas the classic understanding of the good has both of those things, you know? It's not this quasi or neoplatonic idea that, which I don't even know if it's classically neoplatonic, but the idea of the, you know, the bad is just like what I don't like, what causes pain. Because that brings in Job, right? Job. Was that, what happened to Job bad? Um, not necessarily. So I don't know how all these things relate because I see there is a, there is a way. I mean, this is very much, and this gets into a conversation that I want to have with Tripp uh, Fuller and perhaps Sam about Christian anarchism in relation to, because so many people understand that when I say that too, or Nate, about talking about anarchism. Because um, it's not this revolutionary, coercive, violent thing. Um, it's, it's a voluntary, it's voluntarism, or it's, it's a non-coercive mode of becoming, which of course is going to be painful, but it shouldn't be. So how does all that look? Like, what's happening in the world? I don't know. What does that make people think of? Because I'm trying to figure these things out and talk about these things in a diagnostic way that doesn't divide. Like, I just, I want us to stop dividing over it, even when we're talking about ideas. Um, and, and part of it is a problem of scale, too. This is why I've always talked about technological babble, is I don't think the good scales. I think when you start systematizing and using... And, and using systems and technology and things work at scale, you just, you play into this divisive culture war thing. But like you, you can't afford that <clears throat> at the smaller personal, relational embodied scales. Because if you divide there, like you all die down to the individual because the isolated autonomous individual doesn't exist and will biologically die because you're out of harmony with everything around you. All right, I'll leave her there.